award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. My friends, on December 17, 2012, a beautiful lady by the name of Stacy Marina Walton was shot and killed. And uh, it was a result of domestic violence. Uh, and it's something that I think that everyone should be concerned about, domestic violence, but most especially for those pe people who knew Stacy, knew what kind of person she was. Today, I'm very, very honored to have on the show um, Stacy's family. And uh, we have Stacy's mom, Julie Lyons. We have Stacy's stepmother, uh, Teresita Marino. And we have Stacy's cousin, who is also an attorney who deals with domestic violence, um, Romilda Crocomo. And today, folks, we're going to have a two-part story, a uh, story of Stacy herself and also domestic violence, how this affects so many people in the country today. Eighty-five percent of the women uh, fall into this category, domestic violence. Uh, I've asked the three beautiful ladies here uh, before the show is what would they want to get out of this show? What would they want you as a viewer to get from the show? And if we could save one person's life, uh, it would be a, an accomplishment, and too bad Stacy's not listening to the show today. I'm sure she is, but too bad she's not listening to the show because maybe we would have been able to save her life. With that being said, I want to welcome the three of you on the show. Thanks so much for coming. It takes a lot of courage. I appreciate it. Well, uh, Romil, though, you and I have had some phone conversations, mm -hmm. emails, and I appreciate the fact that, you know, you called. Uh, first of all, I know you're Stacy's cousin, but you're an attorney, right? Uh, correct. Uh, I'm an attorney. Uh, she's my niece, actually. I'm, so, I'm very That's sorry, all right. niece. That's okay. Uh, I am an attorney, uh, and uh, for seven years, uh, I worked in Scranton, in Lackawanna and Susquehanna County, uh, with the Women's Resource Center, and I represented um, victims of uh, abuse and sexual assault. Um, so I, I know the field. Uh, really well uh, from the courtroom. Having experienced it personally, there's nothing that can prepare you uh, for the phone call that someone that you love was murdered. Domestic violence, we talked a little bit about it, and then when I had the district attorneys from Schuylkill County and Luzerne County, we talked a little bit about, you know, some of the telltale signs. Um, you know, uh, a general description of domestic violence uh, and uh, it would be what? Some of the things we should look for? Well, very generally, uh, domestic violence uh, and abuse is a continued uh, pattern of behavior where one person in a relationship, uh, and it could be any kind of relationship, it could be uh, a sibling relationship, parents, children, uh, people who are married, uh, but one person in that relationship is exercising power and control over the other person. It could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be psychological, it could be uh, financial. Uh, but it's a situation that fundamentally means that one person wants power and control over another person. So immediately, you know, for those people, first of all, if those people are being abused, they should seek help immediately. And folks, I'm going to put some numbers on the screen. Um, and Sammy, you could feel free to put them up anytime you want. But the Loser and County number is a toll-free number, 800-424-5600. Um, and uh, the Schuylkill Women in Crisis, 570-622-6220, uh, or 800-282-0634. And of course, the Domestic uh, National Investment Violence Hotline, which is 1-800-799. Safe. Um, as soon as they see this, something mm -hmm. happens. If, if you're being abused, I would highly recommend call immediately just to get information. But if the very first sign that you you know you're abused physically or whatever, what do you what do you what do you suggest? Well, I suggest you call one of these hotlines. Uh, every county in Pennsylvania has a domestic violence and a rape crisis center, uh, and they have 24-hour hotlines where they have trained. Uh, counselor advocates uh, who will uh, help you. They provide other services. They have shelters. Uh, if you need a, a temporary safe uh, place to stay, uh, 
they uh, provide, some, some of them provide legal assistance, some of them provide transitional housing. Um, if you call the national number, they will, they will directly patch you into your local uh, number. But as soon as you feel that you're in an abusive situation, and even if it's before you are hit, uh, you should call one of these uh, uh, places, and uh, they have groups. They will safety plan with you. The key to getting out of a domestic violence situation is to safety plan. Not only while you're still in it, but even after you leave. Um, studies have shown that uh, when a woman leaves a violent relationship, that lethality increases. The ironic thing here is you're, you're in it for seven years mm -hmm. and your niece was being abused and December 17, she was shot and killed and it says here um, that the coroner's report indicates that there was severe bruising throughout her body on her skull and face, her legs and hands. Yeah. And she was beaten before she was shot and her aunt was involved with domestic violence, okay? Did you, did you, did she ever talk to you about it or did you ever know anything that was going on? At the end uh, of uh, the relationship, Stacy was going through a divorce. Uh, we, we did talk. Uh, and Sam, you have to understand that when, when people are in abusive situations, it's very personal and uh, a matter of fact, a lot of the women that I represented, and I think in retrospect, even Stacy was ashamed of it. Uh, and they blame themselves. Uh, Stacy did file a PFA uh, a few months before the murder, um, but it's it haunts me that I didn't see the signs. The this is such a difficult thing because what what happens is you know there are people that uh, may be abused, you may have a fight, and the husband or the wife, someone's hurt, and then after a while, remorse sets in, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, honey, I, I didn't mean to do it. I, I, you know, I don't know what happened. You know, we're having financial problems. You know, we have this and this. You know, the pressure I have, the blah, blah, no matter whatever the excuse may be. Uh, and then the, 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 the person, even though they may have a mark on their face or their neck or whatever, they forget, you know, it's okay, it'll be mm -hmm. okay. What do you tell people for the, 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 who experience that for the very first time? Well, if it's a situation where you're arguing and it escalates um, and you want to continue on in the relationship, um, certainly uh, there are counseling and therapies that uh, couples can go to uh, together or uh, individually. But abuse is this constellation of behaviors uh, such as if your partner doesn't let you sleep at night and you can't wake up and go to work, or when you fight uh, or have an argument with your uh, partner and they take the car keys, uh, if your uh, partner or whoever you're in relationship with uh, shows up unexpectedly at work or if you're out with your friends, those are red flags that it's not a healthy relationship and that you're in an abusive relationship. So if it escalates to violence, you need to get out and um, you need to plan getting out. Folks, I'm talking to uh, Teresa. Um, I'll be talking to uh, Teresita Marino, who is Stacy's stepmother, Julie Lyons, who is Stacy's mom, and I'm speaking with Ramilda Krokomo right now, who's Stacy's aunt. And um, unfortunately, if, if Stacy was alive today and listening to this show, um, maybe she would continue to be alive because um, she would get some information from the show. We come back, I'm going to talk to uh, Stacy's mom and stepmom and, and what happened, uh, Stacy's story. For those of you who knew Stacy, she was a beautiful, wonderful person. Uh, for those of you who do not know Stacy, I'm hoping through this program you get to see 
uh, other people who may have lived the life that Stacy lived and, and we can do something to, to save somebody. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam Sancho folks. Today's show, the story of Stacy Marino Walton uh, was shot and killed December 17, 2012. We have their family here on the show. But before we go to the show, remember our email. My email is sam at ssptv.com. That's sam at ssptv.com. And of course, our website, ssptv.com. Uh, over two, three million hits we're having on our website. Thank you so much, folks, for the great responses. And our official water, folks, as you know, is greatspringwater.com. Greatspringwater.com. It's like good, but better. This is the water that we use. All the different waters are all from greatspringwater.com. So if you're looking for some great water, that, that's the water you want to get. My guest today, uh, we have uh, Julie Lyons, who is Stacy um, uh, Walton's mom, uh, and Teresa Mar Marino, Teresito Marino, who is Stacy's stepmom, uh, and of course, Ramilda Crocomo, who is Stacy's aunt. Uh, Julie, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Uh, t a tough, tough show. I, I appreciate it very much. I'm hoping that we can get a lesson here. Your daughter, Stacy, uh, what could you tell our audience about your daughter, Stacy? Well, other than being beautiful, she was kind. She loved her students. She loved her son. She loved her son to death. And she, I, I don't know, without crying, we miss her. Uh, Julie, did you, as a mom, did you detect any physical abuse or any domestic violence with Stacy at all? Never, never, never. In your conversations with you, did never. you ever? No, mm -hmm. never. You did know that she had a PFA, right? At the end, yes, at the end. Oh. And did you ask her what happened, why she's filing for that? I did, I did. She said, different things happened, but she said it's verbal, you know. She didn't get into it. She didn't want to talk about it mm -hmm. with me. As a mom, you know, uh, once you, once you, and I know you very well, I know that you, you know, you, you're no dummy by no means. You, you're very smart and very intelligent, and you know, you have a feel for people. But sometimes, you, you know, when it comes to your own children, you could, mm -hmm. it's a little different. Did, um, when you found out that she was, you know, when she had the PFA, did, your, did you try to do any snooping, any try to find out different things? I did. I asked her all the, you know, I, every conversation, are you okay? When I found out she was leaving, to be careful, I, I begged her not to go into the house the last day. The day that she was shot, December 17th. That morning. You mm -hmm. spoke to her in the morning. I did. And what did you tell her? She told me she was going back into the house, and I begged her not to. She said she just had to go and bring dog food and pick up some last things. Mm -hmm. And I never spoke to her after that. So other than you being concerned that there was something going on, you never realized, you know, according to, now I'm only reading what the coroner's report said here. It said that she was severe, severe bruising throughout her body. This is the coroner's report, correct? There was, well, they, the report uh, uses the medical terms, but okay. it was bruising. There okay. were uh, uh, bruises uh, over uh, Julie, many areas of her body. Yeah, uh, Julie, uh, first of all, I... I can't even express the pain that any parent would have, okay, and, and the sadness. Uh, and especially if you knew uh, Stacy, it was a, it's a whole different ballgame. And as we're talking here, folks, we're showing some pictures of Stacy, and maybe people may not re remember her name, but you'll see her face, and she was very active. How would you describe your daughter, Stacy? As you said, she was very... Uh, she was full of life, full of fun. She loved her son. She loved teaching. She loved her kids at the school. And they loved her. She was always willing to help someone else out. So for the people who may not know, that like you did not know, okay, what, what would you do differently now if Stacy was still alive and going through this? I probably would not, I probably would have been on her and not backed away when she said, Mother, please, because that's what she said. You would have been persistent. She was, yeah, she was yeah. probably ashamed like Ramilda said. 
Teresita, being um, uh, Stacy's stepmother, and, uh, and I t applaud the, the, the both of you for being here today. Really, I do. I think it sends a great message to the viewers as to you have a stepmom and you have the, real, uh, the mom here. Uh, t tell me about Stacy through your eyes as a stepmom. Stacy was just not only beautiful on the outside, but she was beautiful on the inside. And the day of the tragedy, she was to come back to our house. Her personal belongings were already in our home. And I spoke to her at 5.30. She called me that evening. And she was, she was to come back, and she never did. Her son, thank God, did come back to our house. I, I think about that every day, all right? She sacrificed everything for her son. No. John Ross was 21, and she felt it was time that she could move on now with her life, and maybe she could have a little bit of happiness. So what happens after you get the call? That's, who called you then? No, we were there. My husband, her father, John Ross, her son, and I were there that morning. Um, what happened was I tried texting her, and she wasn't responding. And then I called her, and she still wasn't responding. And okay. I said, Joe, you know, this isn't right. She's not answering my calls or my text. I said, why don't you go up with John Ross, and I will follow you in our car. And I got there first. They got there. John Ross went into the house. You didn't go in the house? You I just... did not. Okay. I made a decision at that moment in time not to do it. To wait for... Your husband? And no, I, no I, don't, I didn't have access to the house. Okay. John Ross did. Okay. So when um, Joe and John Ross got there, John Ross, of course, went to the keypad, in through the garage, in through the laundry room, and Joe was right behind him. John Ross came running out of the living room into the kitchen, and then Joe went in and saw it, and he came out and held John Ross back. At that point, we, I knew something was wrong because both Stacy's vehicle was there and Johnny's vehicle was there. And I called 911. Um, I made a conscious decision not to go in because I have to take care of my husband and John Ross now. And every day, I look into their eyes and I see it. You know, it's not in our DNA to bury a child, no matter how old that child is. And my husband saw his oldest daughter in a pool of her blood. My grandson, our grandson, saw his parents, all right, brutally and tragically, in, in a split second, his life changed forever. And I see that in his eyes every day. And I could never be prouder of anybody in my life than I am of John Ross. This young man has carried himself with such dignity and grace through this whole horrific tragedy. He, he gets up every morning. He's completing his senior year at the university. Uh, it, I, I am so honored and privileged to say that I am his grandmother. And he lives with Joe and, and me now. And I'm grateful for that because he was always very close to his grandfather. And uh, you know, it's, it's just something that none of us will ever, ever get over. Last night, we went to a vigil at Marywood University, and Joe participated in it. Um, I, you know, it, it amazes me, you know, how they get up in the morning and carry on, because I can see in their eyes what they saw that day. You have a letter. Yes, I do. That yeah. explain what, what, what this is a letter where you found or someone found it. Someone found this letter at uh, Freeland school okay. and gave it to the son of a friend of Stacy's and we got a copy of the letter. This was found last week as, as we were at a vigil at Luzerne County Courthouse, the empty place at the table. If you, if you could go through it, I'd appreciate you yes. reading it. This, this letter captures the essence of Stacy. It is simple, but it's eloquent at the same time. It says, to the family of Mrs. Walton, Stacy, we lost forever a great teacher, a great mother, and a great friend, but her example will remain in our memories for the rest of our lives. She was always ready to help every kid, 
every person who is in need. And now that she has gone, we have to follow her example. Rest in peace and be sure that her soul will be in heaven where the good people like her is seated at the right hand of our, our almighty heavenly father, God. I don't have words to describe this excellent teacher and friend of mine devoted to helping everyone. Rest in peace, Stacy Marino Walton. And it is signed. I thank the person who wrote this. We found it on Thursday. It was given to us Thursday. It's dated December the 20th, 2012. Uh, folks, uh, Andy Rooney wrote many things and he said one thing here. He said, I've learned that I wish I could have told my mom that I love her one more time before she passed away. We'll be back right after this. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam LaSant. You're watching the Sam LaSant Show special story about Stacy Marino Walton, uh, who was shot and killed December 17, 2011, based because of domestic violence. And my guest today is Romilda Crocomo, her mom, Julie Lyons, and her stepmom, Teresita Marino. Uh, in closing, uh, Romilda, you, you, you're also an attorney. You deal with this. Uh, about 30, 45 seconds, what message would you like to give our audience about this terrible domestic violence? Nobody deserves to be hit or abused, and nobody has the right to hit or abuse anyone else. Don't be silent. Seek help. There are people out there who can help you. Uh, Sammy, keep the numbers up while we're talking to uh, Romilda and Julie and to Rashida. All right, Julie, you know, uh, I applaud you for staying on the show. Uh, it's... Uh, it's just heartbreaking. I, I know it is, but you know, uh, Stacy's watching the show. Her spirit's here. Uh, what would you tell our audience uh, as a mother? Just pay attention to the signs. Try to, if you question any, if it, there's any question, question it. Keep at them. That's my mother. That's that's my wife. She stays right on. Never, you know. Sometimes you don't like what you have to hear, but that's the way she is. And Teresita, I told you, it's a pretty name. I love that name, Teresito. Uh, again, I applaud you for being here as the stepmom of Stacy. In closing, what would you like to tell our audience? That it's important that they seek help, uh, whether it's a, a family member or uh, victim's resources. There's help out there, and you have to seek the help. You have to come forward, and you have to say something to somebody because not only does nobody deserves to be hit, but they don't deserve to die, all right? And she was brutally, brutally murdered. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it's after the fact, of course, and it's so sad that we have to have shows like this. I have these shows only because, uh, as we said, if there's one person out there that knows of a friend or a relative that is being abused, we can save their lives. You worked on this for how many years? Seven years, you said, been doing yes. this. You could, you could write a ton of books, I'm sure, and tell tons of stories of if only they would have, if only they would have, you know, done this, okay? And that's the message. Is it's always that first time, I, I mentioned as a little cancer, when someone finds out that they have a little cancer, no matter where it is in their body, the doctor says, we got to get it out immediately. And if you see that one time before it spreads into something, it, it, it becomes just a critical situation. We wouldn't have shows like this. We would have happy shows, okay? I, you know, in a sense, this is a happy show because it's a celebration of Stacy and her beautiful life that she had. And, you know, God works, as, as they always say, in funny ways, mm -hmm. Julie and, and uh, Teresita and uh, Romilda. It, 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 giving a message out there that you realize how many people's lives we could have saved from this, okay? Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. I, I really do. Uh, folks, uh, remember 24-7 SSPTV.com. You know, this show is seen all over the world. You may have people, that you have friends in any state uh, or anywhere they live that they would like to take a listen to the show and actually hear the parents and step-parents and, and relatives of a person who was domestically, uh, who was shot and killed from domestic violence. Could be a lesson to learn for everybody. And there's domestic violence centers all over the country. So it doesn't have to be reserved to Schuylkill County, Carbon County, or uh, Luzerne County, or whatever county is watching the show. 
it's an opportunity for you to be safe. Uh, the phone numbers are on the screen. You saw beautiful pictures of Stacy. Uh, her memory will live on forever. And uh, I hope that we, we were able to accomplish something on this show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.